I'm Betsa Zlokovic, neuroscientist in Rochester. I would like to introduce our paper on parasites that is coming out in this issue of Neuron. Neurovascular unit is comprised of vascular cells, endothelial, and pericytes, glia, such as astrocytes and microglia, and neurons. The exact role of pericytes in the neurovascular unit in the adult brain and during brain aging remains elusive. However, it is known that pericytes play a key role in the development of cerebral microcirculation. Using two different adult viable pericyte deficient mouse strains with variable degrees of pericyte loss, we have investigated whether pericyte loss in the adult brain and during aging can influence brain capillary density, resting cerebral blood flow, blood flow responses to brain activation, and blood brain barrier integrity to serum proteins and blood derived potentially cytotoxic and neurotoxic molecules. We have also studied the effects of an age dependent pericyte loss and the resulting hemodynamic disturbances on neuronal structure and function and the onset of neuroinflammation. Mouse lines that we used in these studies express PDGFR beta exclusively on pericytes and not on other cell types in the CNS. Hello, my name is Robert Bell. I'm a PhD graduate student in the Zlokovic Laboratory. After initially confirming a significant reduction of pericytes in one-month-old PDGF receptor beta heterozygous mice, we found that the reductions of pericytes progressed as the animals aged. We then asked the question, how does a loss in brain pericytes affect the cerebrovascular system? Using in vivo multi-photon microscopy as shown here, we were able to generate 500 micron thick Z-stack fluorescent angiograms after a tailbane injection of 2 million Dalton fluorescein conjugated dextrin. We found a significant reduction in the length of perfused capillaries, which corresponded to reduced cerebral blood flow measured by autoradiography, beginning at one month of age in pericyte deficient mice. Using hypoxyprobe pimidazole, we confirmed that the reductions in cerebral microcirculation lead to severe hypoxic changes in the brains of PDGF receptor beta heterozygous and F7 mice. Next, to determine if there is vascular permeability and blood-brain barrier breakdown present in pericyte deficient mice, we utilized time-lapse imaging of a low molecular weight 40,000 deltan tetramethylrhodamine conjugated dextrin. As you can see, in normal wild-type littermate controls, the dextrin remains within the blood vessels over a 30-minute time period. However, there was significant leakage of the dextrin from the blood vessels in pericyte-deficient mice. The vascular permeability in pericyte-deficient mice was also confirmed using a non-invasive fluorometric technique. My colleague will now introduce how these vascular changes may contribute to neurodegenerative processes. Hello, my name is Ethan Winkler, and I'm an MD-PhD student in Dr. Slokovic's laboratory. As Bob just explained, we discovered two parallel pathways, reductions in cerebral microcirculation and blood-brain barrier breakdown, which may potentially lead to neurodegeneration independently or in synergy. To confirm this hypothesis, we first examined the presence of several serum-derived neurotoxic and ovasculotoxic proteins, normally excluded from the brain by an intact blood-brain barrier. As seen here, there is an age-dependent increase in perivascular and parenchymal fibrin deposits that correlated well with reductions in pericyte coverage. Furthermore, as this image demonstrates, fibrin was observed to leak from small cerebral capillary segments lacking pericyte coverage, supporting the notion that pericytes play an integral role in maintaining the adult blood-brain barrier. To evaluate whether toxic accumulation of serum-derived proteins and hypoxia could lead to a secondary vascular-mediated neurodegeneration, we analyzed neuronal structure and function with several techniques. As seen here, Golgi-Cox histologic analysis revealed a significant progressive loss of dendritic spines in the PDGFR beta heterozygous mice at 8 and 16 months of age. Similarly, hematoxylin and eosin staining noted significant structural abnormalities in the CA1 hippocampal subfield at the same time points. In agreement with these results, novel object location and recognition behavioral testing showed progressive age-dependent impairments. Significantly, no neuronal structural or functional deficits measured by behavioral testing or extracellular electrophysiologic recordings were noted in one-month heterozygous animals an age in which a pronounced vascular phenotype is already present. Therefore, this suggests that neuronal degenerative changes develop following a primary vascular insult in this model. We now return to Dr. Slokovic for some concluding remarks. Now I want to summarize what my colleagues were showing you. We showed that deficient PDGFR beta signaling results in pericyte degeneration in the adult brain and aging 
leading to brain vascular damage by two parallel pathways. One, a reduction in brain microcirculation, causing diminished brain capillary perfusion, cerebral blood flow, and blood flow responses to brain activation, which leads to chronic perfusion stress and hypoxia. And second pathway, blood-brain barrier breakdown associated with brain accumulation of serum proteins and cerebrovascular toxic and neurotoxic micromolecules, leading to secondary neuronal degenerative changes. We show that age-dependent vascular damage in perisodeficient mice precedes neuronal degenerative changes, learning and memory impairment, and the neuroinflammatory response. Thus, pericytes control key neurovascular functions that are necessary for proper neural structure and function, and pericytes loss result in a progressive age-dependent vascular mediated neurodegeneration. Our new vascular concept of neurodegeneration, who have broader implications for our understanding of neurological disorders associated with perfusion stress and BV compromise, such as Alzheimer's and ALS. It might guide new therapeutic approaches for neurological disorder directed at brain pericytes.